thank you very much. Nice to see you again. Uh, our next lecture, Valentina Cola will work with Lucolini and she will explain a little bit more details. It's coming from Pisa, Scuola Superiore Santa Ana. She's going to talk about low cost, I guess, but also large scale with the okay. Yes, no, it's, it's low cost, indeed, as you will see, the deep primary material is very poor and uh, well uh, first of all uh, thank you uh, for, for, for your uh, nice attention to my intervention it, my name is Valentina Colla I'm a technical research manager at the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna which is a special status public university uh, in Pisa uh, which acts uh, uh, actually as a research center because uh, it has um, uh, structures explicitly devoted to research. During my speech I will uh, um, talk about uh, how my cooperation, our cooperation as I'm a coordinator of a, a research group of about 15 people dealing with uh, manufacturing technologies uh, and uh, in the, uh, industrial processes and uh, I've been involved together with my colleague Enrico Dini in, um, in, the, in the, the development of its own idea of uh, printing, originally printing houses and artifacts uh, starting from sand, so a very low cost and very, um, uh, and very basic material you can find almost everywhere uh, also on the moon. And, uh, and that's also the, the former idea of my intervention, I think, came from the fact that we have uh, recently concluded a project uh, funded by the European Space Agency, uh, where the technology that I will uh, describe uh, was em uh, employed for printing uh, building blocks uh, for um, a potential lunar outpost. So, uh, my intervention is more or less organized uh, as follows. Uh, the, I will try to explain to you uh, how this te particular technology, the D-shaped technology works. Uh, uh, this technology has been patented by Enrico Dini and is now uh, holded by his uh, company Monolite UK. You can see here the, the, the logo. And, uh, um, is, uh, this technology has been patented uh, for printing uh, big objects uh, with uh, um, uh, two main printing components. Uh, one, the solid component, uh, is sand basically. And uh, um, this technology is already patented and working for uh, terrestrial artifacts and I will show you uh, how it works and which kind of artifacts are now produced. I will uh, show you some standard, I would say, terrestrial applications. So the, the application where it is now uh, used, uh, which are uh, in any case quite uh, particular and I would say from uh, also frontier application as we are talking about uh, uh, kind of architecture and art that uh, is fused for instance with nature so with uh, natural background so it's something n not really straightforward and uh, then I will talk about the construction of building blocks for an outpost on the moon, on outpost on the moon. And I will show you also some exemplar application uh, uh, of this technology for submarine environment, uh, which is uh, uh, one of our uh, future potential applications we want to strengthen most because we, we see there uh, very high potential. And uh, so the, the kind of printer we, we are going to use is really different from the one I can see here. It's a very huge printer. The, this is not the biggest one, but the biggest one now is 7 meters per 7 meters, approximately with a height of, uh, of uh, uh, printing height, uh, not the total height, of about uh, two and a half, three meters. So, um, and uh, so y you can see here, this is not the biggest uh, exemplar of the printing machine, but you can see here the proportion with respect to the, uh, the, the, the human uh, dimension. And 
uh, this should show you, I hope it will work, uh, how, how it actually works. If it, uh, so we have, uh, um, I hope it will start. If not, I will click again, but it's a little, a little bit <coughs> steady. So here we have, uh, uh, um, this is the printing, uh, uh, printing head, which is uh, composed by a series of uh, small uh, tubes, I would say, uh, where the, an ink is, uh, um, is injected. So you have a predeposited layer of sand material. No, it's definitely steady. I will try and do like this to see if it starts or not. Um, no. So, uh, the, the, uh, okay, yes, now it's working. And uh, so you have uh, predeposited pre pre la layer of sandy material and then uh, this uh, uh, printing head uh, deposits uh, um, dots of a liquid solution which is the second uh, uh, element of the combination which is we call it ink is a solution of uh, um, um, magnesium chloride salts with um, six molecules of uh, water, exhydrate uh, uh, chlorine uh, saturated um, solution. Uh, and uh, the, the dots, uh, I will show you afterwards some uh, uh, details on the printing processes. Uh, the dots are uh, deposited uh, um, uh, according to a predefined scheme. Uh, the different uh, um, tubes that convey the dots uh, are separated by uh, five centimeters so uh, in the biggest uh, um, realization so you need uh, in this biggest uh, um, uh, dimension of the machine you need more than one uh, passage of the um, printing head in order to fill uh, all the required uh, um, sections of the printed object. So the printed object is realized uh, uh, f by superimposed levels of sand and uh, um, binding material, the ink. So the sand is deposited is in this container which deposited the, the and then the ink is uh, uh, injected over the uh, sand in a selective way and uh, depending on the, uh, the shape uh, that you want to provide to the printing, uh, printed object. Uh, to, uh, at least to our knowledge, uh, this uh, technology is the, the one which is capable of printing the largest object, object as the dimension. The, this video refers to the printing uh, of a single uh, small habitative module. You will see then, you, you can see it, it's a small house uh, that you can see in the book, but I will show you also afterward. And uh, you, this, um, uh, they, they, they have been the first uh, uh, the first one, Monolite UK, is the first uh, um, developer of uh, 3D printing uh, technology which was capable of printing a, a house, a small house, uh, in a unique shot. So in one only uh, printing uh, um, uh, session, I would say. Obviously it's a small house. It's uh, imagined for, uh, for, I would say, uh, not for permanent residence, but uh, for uh, emergence, uh, so as an emergent solution. But, and also it's demonstrative, but in any case, uh, it is uh, uh, one of the biggest objects that have be, which have been ever printed in, uh, in the history. And uh, with respect to uh, f uh, fire from construction, for instance, or other technologies which are large scale, uh, surely the, the dimension is... Uh, okay, this is, a, a, as I promised you, a detail of the printing. Uh, here you can see the ink, 
the, the ink, uh, the jet, and how it is deposited on the sand uh, layer. Okay, so you have a, a, a straight row filled with all these inject injectors uh, of uh, this solution, which aggregates uh, on the sand, uh, aggregates the sand uh, and uh, forms a chemical reaction that uh, um, uh, uh, make uh, the, the level compact, uh, the sand compact, uh, aggregates with respect also to the, um, to the um, uh, levels that are under the printed one. All this is controlled by uh, obviously a computer and a, um, ad hoc developed software which uh, takes uh, as uh, inputs uh, the, pr uh, the object to be printed, uh, automatically divided, uh, it divides it into slices. Depending on the dimension of the printer, these slices can be up to um, five millimeters high. It depends from two to five millimeters. Smaller uh, machines have, are, are, have um, a higher resolution but can print uh, smaller, uh, th thinner la uh, layers. Uh, big, the biggest machine, uh, the one that has been used for, uh, for, for, for instance, for the moon application, uh, has uh, a lower resolution, which, however, is not needed for very big applications and uh, uh, can print layer up to half, uh, one half centimeter. And uh, these, uh, these are the, the, this, uh, the, 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 um, the kind of objects that have been printed so far are both for architectural application and also artistic application. The very first, uh, our very first uh, um, printed object was uh, an artistic uh, uh, sculpture, the so-called radiolaria. Radiolaria actually are some uh, pro protozoi, are, are some uh, small animals with a particular internal structure, an internal core that uh, um, collect, uh, aggregates some uh, soft material, so a protozoid, I think. And uh, um, an architect designed this structure uh, firstly, in a smaller dimension, and then uh, we have uh, uh, um, the final uh, device was far bigger than this one. This was the, the, the demo. The demo was uh, printed in one shot, while the final realization, which was, uh, uh, I think, about eight meters high, was printed in pieces. So the pieces was uh, uh, have been had uh, some holes inside for some uh, internal uh, uh, core of metal, and then the pieces were uh, somehow uh, piled or, or, or each stacked on each other. And but the, e each piece was more than uh, uh, one meter high. So this is G, uh, and. Uh, this is another, uh, another uh, um, set of application we have developed uh, due to the particular um, material uh, by which uh, these objects, by, by, by which our printer is fed, that basically is uh, um, sand. Sand with a quite high content of magnesium oxide because the reaction is based on uh, formation of magnesium oxides and uh, uh, this is a chaise longue uh, and there is also one line of uh, one series of printed objects uh, that are objects uh, uh, for uh, architectural objects uh, suitable for insertion into natural environments because uh, these kind, the, the kind of surface that is formed uh, by the superposition of all these layers of sand is particularly suitable to be house, uh, grasped, to be climbed by the, 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 um, the plants, the vegetation. So in practice if you put some, some kind, one of these cultures within a natural environment, a garden and so on, in quite a few months uh, with, uh, it can be covered by uh, vegetation. So the, 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 the chaise longue or, or the other objects can, be, can become all green and covered in vegetation, which is a, a quite particular uh, application, but uh, it's a, a way 
So this is, for instance, one of these sculptures. The sculpture is particular as it is, <coughs> but it's even more uh, attractive if you think that if you can plant some uh, uh, <coughs> vine. uh, vines or, or, or other edera or something like that, uh, you can have it covered by vege vegetation. And that's, uh, this is because the, s the surface, obviously, is quite rough, uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, it uh, keeps water because it's quite porous, and so this makes it particularly suitable for these kind of uh, applications. That's another sculpture. And this also is another uh, particular, uh, th this has received an award. I, I, I must confess, I apologize with my colleague Enrico, I, <coughs> I did not. I, I do not remember which kind of award he, but it uh, has received an award in an, uh, in an exhibition of architecture for outdoor environments. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot remember. And uh, this is, uh, per this uh, is um, I in practice, this, uh, uh, this position should be seats, uh, some kind of seats. Uh, but you should imagine that if you plant suitable veget uh, vegetation, suitable plants uh, here, in uh, less than one mm, year, you can have it all covered by vegetation. So that's the particular application, which is fascinating from my point of view. I, I would confess I'm an engineer. I, I was involved in the development of the software, for instance, for the control of the machines. And also, I, I will explain you how my institution contributed to the moon. <coughs> Uh, project, uh, so uh, I wouldn't have imagined that in my life I could contribute to such kind of uh, of project. But that's the way it is. And this is the small the small house uh, that has been printed in uh, in one shot. And uh, so it, it is indeed small, but not such small uh, with respect also to the other artifacts. <coughs> Obviously, it's a completely different kind of uh, application with respect to all the, the application I see here. That means the precision is, the, the resolution is completely different, and also the, 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 uh, the kind of surface you can have are completely different. But uh, uh, also the perspective for application, obviously, they are different, and the material is um, very basic. Also, the, the ink, the ink should uh, should be um, uh, should be um, um, studied to be suitably adapted to the kind of sand you want to use as a printer, provided that it contains enough uh, oxides of um, magnesium. There are also some research, not done by ourselves, which uses the aluminium oxides. There is also some literature on this. Uh, on this topic, uh, and but we are studying and investigating also other material, also by products, uh, uh, waste material that is produced by some kind of industries has uh, a huge content of um, metallic oxides and also and can be used with a suitable binder uh, to print objects. In so uh, so doing, you could be able to recycling waste material on one hand, making it inertial, and on the other hand, uh, to build something that is useful to add in practice at a very reduced cost because usually the, 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 the industry pays uh, for their waste to be disposed. Uh, if you use it and if you, they are very happy to bring it to you and uh, without paying anything, obviously. So it's as, as low, the lowest, uh, but there are some, uh, there are some uh, difficulties on this. So this is a uh, future work and ongoing work, actually. So. Due, due to the, its unique features, to the possibility of printing very um, big objects, our um, the, the, the shape technologies has been selected to for application within a project which is uh, which was entitled 3D printed building blocks using lunar soil, which was funded by the European Space Agency, and uh, uh, which was aimed at developing concepts uh, for. The, the construction of uh, uh, human outpost on the, on the moon. 
Well, the moon colonization is not uh, a recent idea. It's something quite uh, aged now in the scientific community. It is receiving increasing attention because uh, there are a series of uh, experiments uh, uh, that uh, could be performed on the moon in very favorable conditions, uh, which cannot be uh, performed here uh, on the on the on the on the Earth, and also because some kind of uh, observations that could be done, observation of uh, uh, the, the rest of the universe that could be done, obviously on the Moon, with, in the absence of atmosphere, cannot be done uh, uh, here on the Earth, and also because the Moon could be the the ideal basis for uh, missions for exploration of other parts of the universe because you have a reduced gravity so the needs for fuel for instance would be much lower and uh, uh, there there is uh, in the recent years there have been uh, increased uh, attention over the um, the, the colonization of uh, uh, the moon. But uh, such as any other kind of colonization, uh, if you want to establish a, um, uh, a settlement, a human settlement there, you must use at most the local material, at least for the first settlement and then be, to be able to build all the components of the new settlements. So even our uh, the, 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 when 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 the the Spanish and English people uh, went to colonize America, they did not obviously bring their own houses. They built with, with the material which was there. Unluckily, uh, the the moon is far uh, poorer than the America with respect to construction material. Uh, there you have a small amount of icy water located close to the South Pole, so, so far we know, at least I'm not a specialist, but they, 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 some specialist told me there is some water uh, on the, close to the South Pole. And there is basically some sand, a particular sand, a sandy soil called regolith. There are also studies that investigate the possibility to dig the, the moon surface, to build the outpost, the outpost underground. And that's uh, another uh, completely different story. But uh, our knowledge of the, um, the rocks uh, underground uh, moon surface is at the moment quite poor to be sure that this kind of solution will actually work. So for the moment, uh, so far also you can, you can find also on the NASA website or the ESA website, the most uh, um, likely solution to develop uh, is the construction of a surface outpost. Um, the, the, the difficulties, obviously, for building a surface outpost are, uh, are enormous. The, the most uh, important uh, problems to face in building a, a surface outpost uh, are the, to protect the, the habitants uh, from radiation, uh, meteorites, uh, precipitations, uh, very, um, very large uh, um, temperature uh, gaps uh, between uh, in a very in quite a small time intervals, uh, so gradient of temperature is quite high. Obviously, the absence of uh, the atmosphere makes the radiation far more dangerous, and uh, um, so. Uh, our project was uh, actually a feasibility study to, to, to prove, to, to see if uh, this concept of printing the outer shell of the, uh, the habitations on the moon could uh, be successful. So it's a concept proof. Uh, there will naturally mm, be other phases, successive phases, uh, up to reach a real demonstration, up to send uh, something that can print uh, houses on the moon. There is some, a, a lot of work to be done. So it was also a quite limited project aiming at demonstrating the feasibility of a concept. And this technology was uh, chosen as it uh, seemed to be the most promising ones among the, uh, the, uh, the ones that, we, that were available at, uh, at the beginning uh, of the, our study. 
So our project has been articulated in different phases. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we, we need to prove that the D-shaped technologies, uh, D-shaped technology work works with the, the moon, the moon sand, the sand that you can find on the moon. But you, you have, we have to search for a suitable material to duplicate the main features of this uh, sandy soil, uh, sandy lunar soil, uh, which is called regolith. There are many uh, regolith simulants commercially available, but they have uh, a, a quite huge cost. We need a big amount of this regolith. And also, their properties are not really as similar, as, uh, as similar to, the moon, uh, to the moon sand as they claim to be. So one part of the project uh, was aimed at finding a low-cost solution for having uh, uh, um, uh, a suitable uh, uh, duplicant of the lunar legolith. And we found it. We found a volcanic lake near to the Bolsena Lake, which is a volcanic lake, whose sand suitably modified and mixed and uh, doped with some magnesium oxide can really uh, realistically duplicate uh, the regolith uh, as uh, the, some features that are quite similar to the most uh, famous and uh, used uh, um, simulant of the moon uh, sand. There is one commercial available, the JASC is uh, the, m the m most widely known uh, com commercial uh, um, duplicant, uh, commercial replication of the uh, moon soil. And we, f we found something, we, we built something that is uh, uh, very cheap and as accurate as, there, as the dissimulant. And then we have to make some vacuum test to prove that, that uh, our technology was applicable in the in absence of atmosphere and also at reduced gravity. This was a, a, a big problem because uh, uh, the, 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 mm, the, the technology was developed for being applied here on the, uh, with, the, with the gravity. There was no guarantee that the dot of aggregant, the dots of aggregant uh, behave in a similar way, suitably adapted to the regolith, uh, to, to, be, to, to aggregate the, 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 the regolith, uh, behave similarly to uh, what uh, can be, um, what happens uh, normally on the Earth. And uh, for instance, we, try, we have to try different way to inject the regolith under the sand instead of uh, making it uh, dropped on the surface because uh, this uh, uh, ensures that uh, the, the, the most of the simulants is, uh, uh, most of the um, uh, binder aggregates the sand. Uh, then uh, we have a feasibility study on, uh, uh, for the adaptation of these technologies to the operation in a harsh environment and with very limited support from the human operators. We, this was the uh, one of the part uh, that was allotted to my research group. That means uh, uh, the, 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 although the, the printer is not, the 3D printer is normally uh, kept uh, with a software that uh, uh, helps uh, in the, uh, in the, the is automatically controls the machines, uh, the machine in a way that it prints automatically all the artifacts. Uh, there. Uh, or in any case, there is a, a human operator controlling that uh, all is doing well. If there is something wrong, there is something, some problem with the sense, some uh, cumulus or some uh, occlusion of the nozzles that uh, uh, sprays the ink, there is a human operator monitoring this problem and which usually intervenes and repairs the, the problem. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what normally happens on the, in, during normal operation. On the moon, this is not, oh sorry, on the moon, this is not, uh, this is not possible. So we have to equip the machine, for instance, with a camera in order to monitor 
the, the, how the printing of each layer, uh, to monitor the printing of each layer, and also to develop suitable control strategies that can help to recover eventual failures in the printing process. Uh, so through image processing techniques uh, we have to make some diagnosis of eventual nozzle occlusions for instance uh, compare the ideal layer and the printed layer to see if there are holes if there is a, um, a big difference between what is what is uh, desired and what is actually printed and then uh, control imagine how to control the machine in a way that it can self repair its problem. This is one of the, uh, the problems. So we have to think about a redesign as a concept, a redesign of the whole printed structure in a way that it can be more flexible and adaptable to work on the moon. That means not the huge printer, seven meters per seven meters, three meters height, but a small printer movable which obviously can uh, print, uh, in principle, smaller objects, but can move, so can, however, print big objects by moving, and which cannot, for instance, uh, deposit uh, the, the sand or accumulate the sand, but uh, which can be supported by some uh, rovers or other autonomous vehicles which accumulate the sand. So having the cooperation of uh, uh, more small autonomous vehicle rather having a big uh, structure doing all the job and uh, this is another uh, concept uh, development uh, that was done by Square Spray Santana and that's also a, um, very important the design of the lunar outpost uh, and of the building blocks which was done by some architects uh, famous architects of fosters and partners uh, it's uh, famous designers in, uh, in uh, from London. And the vacuum tests were developed by Alta SPA, which is a uh, uh, coordinator of the project, and also the, its um, company in Pisa, uh, which is, has a big experience in uh, development of an uh, uh, equipment of space vehicles. And um, so, finally. This is the, the results of the concept for our, our base uh, with an inner core and the outer shell. The outer shell is the one that should be printed with the sand, while the inner, uh, inner core is, the, is an inflatable structure. I will show you how it should uh, in principle <laughs> work. So this uh, is, to, this is uh, the uh, the container of an inflatable structure that in principle, at least at the beginning, should be brought from the earth and then it should be, it should be pressurized and th there should be a structure inflated and then the rover and the printer should build the outer shell in sand printing the, the walls. These walls are no, not full walls so also the walls have a particular structure. This structure as an eye glue has been chosen uh, with a, the form of a catenary arc because they are most suitable, simple, simple and also most suitable um, because the angle of repose of the regolith can be uh, below uh, 40 degrees because otherwise all the, the mat there could be problem in the structure of the material. This structure also allows combination of different habitation modules in, in this way. And this is the inner structure of the walls. So the walls are not uh, dense because it, will, it would require an enormous amount of ink. But this structure is the so-called closed, closed foam. So it forms by bubbles. And all the regolith is used also for the walls of the bubbles. And, uh, this is uh, basically one uh, slice of this block that should be printed by the, 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 the printer. And the, having an inner shell, inflatable, pressurized inner shell, also prevents uh, uh, um, an excessive pressure in the inner part uh, of this uh, sandy wall. 
So it decouples on some hand the, the, the forces against the wall, which is also. So here you. This is the printing procedure of the building block. This building block has a dimension is uh, um, approximately as uh, 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 one and a half cubic meter, as in, and there should be another. This is the detail of the printing uh, process. And the printing of the big block has been done uh, with the, in atmosphere, obviously, in the terrestrial atmosphere. And this is the result. This is the, build, the, the block, which has been exposed also at, to, at the Turin exhibition for the um, 150 years of the <coughs> the our oh, sorry on the our republic and uh, well I'm uh, I'm at uh, borderline for, for for the time and uh, this is uh, an example uh, uh, so from from the from the moon we can go to, uh, to the deep sea because this are uh, on the other hand exemplar application of some blocks uh, that have been uh, printed. Uh, to, uh, for submarine application. These blocks are imagined um, especially for damaged uh, submarine environments. Uh, their shape is ideal for, uh, for offering uh, house to small animals, to fishes or small crustaceans and so on, and also as for the um, terrestrial application, uh, it is uh, easily easy to be covered by vegetation. You know that uh, the sea uh, uh, processes in itself uh, any kind of object. You have, uh, uh, the, um, for instance, uh, um, sheep uh, uh, and uh, any, uh, any kind of material is covered by the marine vegetation. The problem is uh, the, um, the time that is required for that. These kind of structures allow a very rapid recovery of damaged uh, underground uh, environment because uh, uh, its, its shape is studied in a way that offers natural um, uh, natural uh, uh, resources uh, to the animals and to the vegetation from under, under underwater environments and we, we saw a, a very huge potential for applications. Uh, obviously you can, you can have any form, you can make also submarine architecture. There are some architects I am very admired that imagine particular forms uh, to be uh, looked at, especially for instance for those countries where there, there is abundance of uh, sand. Uh, let's uh, imagine for instance the the area around the, the Red Sea or something like that, which are, however, uh, where there are problems uh, related to damages caused by commercial navigation, industrial production. Uh, and uh, so the, there are actually some problems. But there are also some um, architects with that fantasy I, I, I will always admire, which uh, invented particular shapes uh, for uh, uh, exploration for, for offering, uh, for, for instance, to tourists, uh, uh, particular paths for exploration. But that's that's my 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 main. That's not my interest. I'm uh, quite um, uh, I'm a sea lover, and uh, I would uh, see a huge potential for application for restoration of damaged uh, submarine environment. And. Uh, we are already working on this, but we want to enforce our uh, our commitment toward this kind of application. So, for the moment, uh, that's all. Thank you. For your um, actually, I come from Brazil, and you have a, a long coast, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of coral. 
and now the corals are getting bad because of the pollution in the seas. So this is uh, probably a, a nice way to mm -hmm. restore, no? to yes. recover the place where they are actually getting bad. Uh, <coughs> but you were mentioning about this ink. The ink is something for gluing the, the, yes. the, 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 the sand. Yes. And, and uh, I, then I have the question. Is uh, <coughs> how toxic is this kind of ink? For the moment, uh, for, for the, the, the application, for, for the kind of sand uh, we are using in Italy, I would say, the kind of sand that they are printing, which is a particular kind of sand they have to, to, to buy, some sand at low cost, but however, it's a white sand you have to buy. The kind of the, the ink that is used is not toxic. The problem is that if you go to Brazil or you go to Red Sea, you cannot think about bringing the, the, the sand from there. So the, 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 this, uh, this um, kind of uh, uh, application has been built in Italy and then transported uh, to, uh, to the destination. If you want to have large installation, you have to use the, 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 the sand that you can find there. And in that case, the ink should be adjusted. And you cannot know in, a priori if the kind of thing that can bind that kind of uh, material will be toxic for, for, for the water. So you have to make some elution tests and so on. So you have to make some tests. This is also valid for the byproducts. You, you have the potential to use byproduct to be this kind of, uh, um, to, to, of, kind of uh, artifact, but you have to make some quite long uh, elution tests or other chemical tests, uh, which are also out of mm, the scope of my culture, but okay, uh, up to elution tests I can, uh, I can reach. Can you talk about sand? That, is it normal sand or is that chemically? No, this uh, is normal. Uh, it's a particular sand, but it's sand that can be. Uh, found uh, in the ground in the ca in the caves, but he, at the moment uh, we have some <coughs> inks suited to some sands that can be bought. If you want to build some uh, big uh, construction in Brazil, you will have your own sand, and it's not uh, absolute. It's not certain. Maybe the ink we have will work. Maybe it will need some have some adaptation, and it is not. Uh, you have to make some chemical tests and quite long tests to prove that in the long term all uh, this material do not uh, harm the environment, surely. It, it's a main concern, it's a main uh, topic for our study. Mr. Um, one of the, the demonstrations that you gave was uh, the printed house. How mm -hmm. long would it uh, take to print something of that size? Uh, um, the, the, pro the process, as you can see, it's not uh, fast. I, I cannot see, I cannot tell you how, but it's an in the, in the, the uh, some hours, hours. It took hours. I think uh, I, I don't remember it, the, 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 the dimension. is not the day, but it's hours. So ten hours, twelve hours, something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact. Uh, Duration, but the, the the order of magnitude is uh, several hours, less than a day, less than a day. But indeed, it's not a fast, uh, it's not rapid. Okay. What type of materials can be used? It's only sand, or there is another materials. We are we are uh, at the moment we use uh, some kinds of sand and we test the regolith, this this particular sand. We, uh, we are testing other materials, uh, also artificial sands or byproducts, but it's a, it's a, th there are ongoing tests we, because each sand needs some kind of adaptation of the ink. Some kind is easy, some kind is not. Depends. Sorry, what are those properties that are generally looking at in this uh, sand that you test? Mm -hmm. There are particular properties that you are looking at in the, in the kind of sand that is used? The, the is basically the content uh, of uh, metallic oxide, in particular magnesium oxide, basically, um, and not only, and the absence uh, of other material that can prevent the chemical reaction to occur. So that's, uh, that's basically the property that we... Question. Uh, 
regulate in uh, the past has been a, a significant threat for machinery because it's abrasive, uh, it's aesthetic, and there uh, are a lot of problems. Uh, did you uh, find a way to manage these problems uh, or not? The, the, the kind of tests we did, uh, we printed the, not only this block uh, but some other blocks, but the, the, the duration of the, the printing test was, was not so long to allow us to examine this kind of problem. So uh, I, I remember that it was a feasibility study, the duration was two years, so it was an interesting project, we invested a lot, we, we, we spent more, far more than we gained, but uh, uh, it was limited. We, 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 developed, we proved some concepts, uh, but we do not face all the problems, the enormous number of problems that should be faced before practical implementation. Another curiosity, did you try for curiosity uh, to print on so dust? On? So dust, wood dust, wood shades? No, 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 no. I, I don't know if it's possible. No, no. Could you mention some of the artists involved in, in some of the sculptures? Uh, I don't remember <laughs> absolutely because, uh, but I can let you know. I can let you know. The, in, the, in the book, there is the name of the author of the Radiolaria, which I do not remember. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the author of the software that allowed to print the Radiolaria, but I'm lucky. I'm not able. And also, and I'm, no, I'm surely, uh, I'm sure that the person of Fosters and Partners will take care of the development of the concept for the, for the, the house, the habitation, is Xavier de Castellier, de Castellier which is an um, architect and also involved in, and uh, which is the, the guy we talked to, which explained us all the, 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 his vision for, for and, uh, but I can let you know if you... And, and also, um, if the sculptures are put outside in mm -hmm. the environment, so they, they, are, they don't uh, get destroyed by... So far, no. So they, they, they surely have some... It's for, for seen that we foresee that we, they will have modifications uh, yeah. uh, during the, 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 the time, like uh, the rocks on the sea, due to rain, not only due to vegetation, but due to rain and other, that's, it's a, a provision for, for this. So, you, you, so far, no, but because we started uh, uh, relatively recently. So this, on one hand, should uh, provide uh, some um, further uh, partic particular features, because you can have the same sculpture that put in England and in Italy could behave differently because of different kind of precipitation. On the other hand, there are surely some problems related, for instance, to eventually, if you make it too high, uh, to stability. And that's the reason why the designer uh, designed it. Uh, it was explained to me, I couldn't yeah. repeat. It was designed in a way that has very deep, many points for um, uh, being fixed to the soil to, to improve stability because this is one of the problems for this kind of sculpture. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your time.